Fire Emblem Engage is the first major release of 2023, and we've played the first eight chapters. Here are 10 of the biggest changes coming to Nintendo's long-running tactical RPG series, with some of my early spoiler-free impressions sprinkled in. 2019's Fire Emblem Three Houses was a huge success for Nintendo, and I'm sure there are some fans expecting the school-based structure from that game to return and engage. While the social sim aspects are still intact, the school-based mechanics unique to Three Houses have been removed. This means you won't be choosing a house or faction at the beginning of the game, you won't be teaching a class of students or taking any out to tea, and you won't be managing your schedule week to week. Instead, Fire Emblem Engage follows a more traditional structure similar to Fire Emblem Awakening. Battles can be selected via the world map, and in between skirmishes you can return to your home base to purchase new equipment, chat with your units, and partake in some diversions. In my experience so far, Engage is a lot more linear than Fire Emblem Three Houses, in which you could choose one of three houses, recruit different students, and even make a few major decisions during the story. Everyone who plays Engage will likely recruit the same people and follow the same route through the story. This may not be a bad thing if the story is really engaging, but those expecting Three Houses' dynamic social progression will find this to be a little more straightforward. The iconic Fire Emblem weapon triangle is back, and I couldn't be happier. Prior to Three Houses, Fire Emblem's combat used to revolve around a rock-paper-scissors style triangle. Sword beats axe, axe beats lance, and lance beats sword. Meanwhile, hand-to-hand -hand arts beat bows, daggers, and tomes. If you fight a unit you have a weapon advantage over, it will cause a break. Breaking an enemy means they can't counterattack. The most efficient way to deal with enemy units is by taking full advantage of the weapon triangle. I'm sorry. A small but meaningful change is now you can control your units directly instead of drawing out a path for them. While it's still grid-based, this new approach offers a little more precision and flexibility to movement. Poison status effects have popped up in Fire Emblem games over the years, but they work a little differently in Engage. Instead of doing tick damage at the beginning or end of each turn, now poison units take more damage than they normally would from attacks. Poison can also be stacked, meaning that if you hit a target multiple times with a poisoned weapon, you'll do even more damage. Weapon durability has been almost entirely removed from Fire Emblem Engage. Thank God. Weapons cannot break, and nearly every weapon can be upgraded with proper materials and gold. Although weapons cannot break, staves can after a certain number of uses, so you'll need to keep track of that in the menu. Yeah. Kind of you. Okay, before we move on to number six, let's pause for a moment. Since I've been talking all about the changes coming to combat, I wanted to talk about my experience so far. I've been playing on the hard difficulty with classic mode turned on, and thanks in part to all these changes, combat feels balanced and satisfying. No one unit is overpowered, and every character serves a specific role. So far, almost every battle apart from the first few have required a lot of forethought and careful planning. I'm really excited to see how this expands as I progress. Okay, back to the numbers. After each battle, you can explore the battlefield, talk to allies, collect resources, and adopt pets. It's kind of cool to see these battlefields up close after each battle, and it's adorable you can just take these little pups home with you. Between battles, you can return to the Somnial, which acts as your home base. There have been things similar to the Somnial in past Fire Emblem games, but in Gage, there are some new activities you can participate in. You can exercise to give your character a temporary buff in the next battle, you can feed and pet Sami for some extra bond fragments, animals you've adopted will gather resources for you in between battles at the animal pen, you can share a meal with two other units to increase their bond, which isn't exactly new, but this time you can save the leftovers for battle. You can train in the arena three times after each battle to get a little extra XP. You can donate to different countries to increase your reward pools after skirmishes. And finally, you can purchase alternate outfits and accessories for your units. The cosmetics only affect the unit's appearance at the Somnial though, and not on the battlefield. At the center of Fire Emblem Engage is the Emblem Ring mechanic. Throughout your journey, you will collect Emblem Rings that house the spirit of past Fire Emblem protagonists. When a unit equipped with an Emblem Ring engages, they summon a classic hero to fight alongside them. 
A unit armed with an emblem ring typically enjoys some stat buffs, a new weapon which can be used while engaged, and a unique skill. The period lasts for three turns, and then the engage meter must be refilled either by attacking, getting hit, casting spells, or standing on a designated recovery tile depicted as blue spaces on the map. Some of the Emblem Ring characters I've been able to utilize so far are Marth from Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and Smash Bros, Celica from Gaiden and its remake Echoes, Shadows of Valencia, Sigurd from Genealogy of the Holy War, Micaiah from Radiant Dawn, Roy from The Burning Blade, and Leaf from Genealogy of the Holy War, and Thracia776. Want to know how many of those games never came to the US? The answer is too damn many. Anyway, just like your standard units, you can also forge bonds with your emblem rings by battling with them equipped and chatting with them at your home base. By improving your bonds, you'll unlock new skills and stat buffs, which can be purchased with skill points in the ring chamber. Along with emblem rings, you can also forge bond rings using bond fragments. Bond rings also feature characters from past Fire Emblem games, but these rings only give equipped units stat buffs. Once you've unlocked an emblem ring, you can purchase random bond rings from their respective game. 100 bond fragments will get you one bond ring, and 1000 will get you 10. By collecting duplicate rings, you can meld them together to forge more powerful versions of those same rings. Thank you. The ring looks amazing. Fire Emblem Engage adds hundreds of in-game achievements that can be converted into bond fragments. Once you've completed a few, you can head over to the protagonist's desk and claim them. These achievements range from deploying specific units multiple times to landing a certain amount of critical hits. Anyway, those are 10 of the biggest changes coming to Fire Emblem Engage. Keep in mind that this is based on the first 8 chapters of the game, so some things could change and new mechanics could be introduced later down the line. Stay tuned for the full review in the coming weeks. Now, it's time to engage. <laughs>